to the Inner Goddess webinar and I'm your host Tanishka and you might know me as the Moon Woman. Okay so in this the main thing that I want to cover is what it actually means to be a goddess. Um, you know that word it's now being used to sell everything from <laughs> air conditioner to razors and yoga pants and you know and it's a word that uh, has become distorted in its meaning. So many people think that a goddess is a perfect woman. So they can kind of recoil at the word. It's like, oh, bugger off, you know. <laughs> you know, one more thing I've got to be or do, you know. And I think that's mainly because there's this idea that it's an icon of sexual desire. You know, um, in other words, it's um, the feminine in terms of how it's valued by men. So a goddess is is portrayed as a woman who's of unearthly beauty and more desirable to a man than mere mortal women. And this has been perpetuated by Hollywood, you know, with screen goddesses. But what's happened is, you know, um, that has been then picked up by uh, commercial advertising and used to uh, imply that a woman should strive to be the fairest of all in the land, which I think you might recognise <laughs> as, you know, the sort of the evil stepmother's um, quest uh, for to be more beautiful than any other woman and this is a very patriarchal idea you know the idea that women compete with one another compare themselves to other women and try to outdo other women um, and that has nothing absolutely nothing to do with being a goddess so we really need to reclaim that word um, from a feminine perspective you know um, so I'll get into what that is. The patriarchal mindset of, you know, goddess being akin to the perfect woman leads women to package what they think are their best assets physically, you know, sexually, and sell themselves as if they were, you know, a commercial um, product. So... Um, you know, I see this more and more in young women and that's where the most pressure is applied. You know, these are women that haven't, um, you know, they're, they're growing their substance, they're getting to know themselves. So, um, you know, they, they just want to be liked. And so they look at what's valued in the society and they try to deliver that. So this overt valuing of women's sexual attractiveness over all their other qualities okay so it's not saying you know we should shroud our sexual appeal and not delight in our curves and in our unique beauty but if we base our intrinsic worth on our appearance we are undermining that because our intrinsic worth has nothing to do with our external appearance or how others see us so um you know this is an image of a young girl doing a selfie you know trying to promote her allure on social media platforms and the truth is being a goddess has absolutely nothing to do with being perfect you know we're constantly showing images of women that are you know doctored by photoshop and airbrushed and you know i mean the, the amount of um manpower that goes into a photo shoot you know people primping and preening and um yeah i mean it's 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 a manufacture it's it, there's nothing natural about it and the truth is being a goddess is about really being connected to nature, celebrating your natural beauty, understanding the cosmic cycles, living within those, 
um, seeing the divine in yourself as a reflection of the divine and in all of nature. So goddesses have always come in all shapes and sizes. It's not about striving to be size zero or, you know, here in Bali they're selling products to um, lighten the skin and become more white and they're, the models that they use in the ads have lighter skin tone than the general population of women. In the West, it's the opposite. We see tanned models. We see tanning products. We see pressure applied to say you shouldn't look white. <laughs> you should look bronzed. So, you know, what's constantly being um, pitched to us is that we are unacceptable as we are that we need to manufacture uh, a look that is something other than what we are and to do that has a price tag. But this isn't the truth, you know. Every woman has a different set of curves, yeah, and they're amazing to behold. Um, many years ago I, I worked as a stripper, over 20 years ago, I might add, and one of the gifts in that, life experience was that I got to see women um, expressing their their essence and there's no two women the same you know when I studied acting we had to study people's walks you know go out and people watch and they made the point that no people no two people have the same walk have the same gait carry their weight distribution in the same manner you know so you know, we are beyond compare. And when we get that, we start celebrating who we are from the inside out. And that changes then how other people see us, yeah, because life is holographic. Everything is reflecting back. So if you're having a war with yourself, with your body, with your feminine identity and expression, you will attract to you... Um, you know, messages, whether that's people putting you down or criticisms or, you know, you will um, hone in on messages that constantly undermine who and how you are. So here we see images of goddess figurines from the Paleolithic and Neolithic times. So that's the Stone Age and the New Stone Age. And you can see they come in all sizes. Yeah, these are um, crone goddess women. So elder women, grandmothers, wise women, because we can see that from their pendulous breasts, you know, their, their weight is, is heavy. And, you know, they, they're, the gravity they're coming back down to earth, which is where the inner wise woman resides deep within the earth. And so these women know to slow down, to really be present. And so having cycled many, many times, they've accrued incredible wisdom. And so in these ancient times, our ancestors, wherever they were on the globe, revered wise women as goddesses and you can see here it's not because of their sexual attractiveness it was because of their wisdom and because of their psychic power their understanding and insight and that's because um, people once valued the inner qualities that we develop with age and the feminine governs the inner terrain the inner landscape which is the realm of the soul so you know, it wasn't just young women that were revered as goddesses for their beauty, but also women in the mothering phase for their beautiful, fecund fertility, for their patience, for their kindness, you know, the milk of human kindness, if you think about breast milk. But also this third stage of the elder woman. So... Goddesses do come in all ages. Here we see a beautiful, natural image of an elder woman who just looks gorgeous. And we, we don't see that being portrayed in mainstream media, which is what saturates the collective consciousness. 
And so if we're consciously um, only taking in images of young women, <clears throat> then that contributes to a, a resistance to the ageing process, which is a natural process. And the more we resist it, the more tension we create, the more fine lines we create. You know, the irony is the more we fear ageing, the more uh, prematurely we actually age. But if we align with nature, if we eat natural foods, if we, you know, um, understand how to caretake our needs in a cyclic way, we age very gracefully. Um, and our beauty, we understand, shines through us. It's about our energy. It's about the inner qualities that we've developed. And so instead of becoming hard and, you know, well, even more hard if you're using Botox, <laughs> <laughs> but you know this is about softening with age and, and accepting the process then our our beauty actually shines and you can see here she's got this luminous hair the word crone originally meant crown to be crowned with your wisdom um, because it's luminous like the moon and it's it's absolutely beautiful <clears throat> goddesses are from all cultures yeah, here we see the exquisite beauty of a woman of, um, you know, Asian uh, descent. And growing up in the West, you know, predominantly we were seeing images of just Anglo-Saxon women, which, um, you know, fortunately there's a growing awareness of the, the promotion of women of all colour um, just in uh, whether that's, you know, your, your Instagram images, you know, but that we celebrate the beauty and the power and the strength and the cultural um, gifts of women of all colours. And it's through the weaving together of these that we are strengthening the global sisterhood and returning the feminine back to the status that it needs to have as equal for life to be sustainable on this planet. So, yeah, women come in all colours and goddesses come in all colours. I mean, my goodness, the, the beauty in this woman um, because she knows who she is that's what comes through. It's the essence of this woman, the power of this woman. That is a goddess um, and her skin is exquisite. So what does make a woman a goddess? Basically, in a nutshell, in a sentence, a goddess is a woman who has awakened her divine feminine essence. Now, <clears throat> that's it a woman who has awakened the goddess energy that is lying dormant within her until she is initiated into um, deep sacred knowledge which activates the consciousness of the sacred feminine and transforms her like a flower from the inside out with a new expanded awareness and we do that by raising kundalini or it's called shakti energy. Shakti is a Hindu uh, word, a Sanskrit word, um, which literally means the goddess. Now, kundalini is the life force, okay? Those that have enjoyed watching the Star Wars films, you know, this is the force that they talk about. Um, it's also referred to as chi, prana, or shakti, but it's the animating energy. That's what shakti is. Shakti is pure energy. So it's, um, you know, in the ancient world, they said Aphrodite's beauty um, is her energy, um, and it's something that emanates from within her. So the idea of trying to be beautiful from the outside in uh, just shows how far removed our culture is from this understanding. 
So Kundalini lies dormant in the base energy center at the bottom of our spines in our central nervous cord. Um, and here we see an artist's uh, depiction of it. Um, and once, you know, we receive these sacred teachings, that energy, it's a meridian of energy that's coiled two and a half times around that base energy center. And it starts to uncoil and move its way up our spine. So kundalini is very powerful. It is the bioelectricity of our bodies. So if you think about electricity, if it's not grounded, yeah, if you've got an electrical wire that's just, you know, flying around, it's dangerous. So too, we need to be very mindful when we raise our kundalini, our electrical current within our body we have to do this step by step uh, with um, an awareness of the yogic teachings so that we avoid a healing crisis known as kundalini emergence so kundalini emergence if you look at um, an ambulance you will actually see the symbol for kundalini emergence, emergency, those twin serpents on that central pillar wrapped around it. It's that symbol of health and healing, which is kundalini. Um, it's now become the medical symbol, um, which has been adopted worldwide by, you know, the medical fraternity. But, Prior to patriarchy, prior to, um, you know, the rise of the medical establishment, it was uh, women that were the healers and the herbalists. And, you know, throughout ancient Greece, there were 300 temples um, in honour of Asclepius that used kundalini raising techniques to restore people back to heal, to a state of healed wholeness. And this is re-emerging now we see you know all these holistic therapies and, and yoga retreats um and people coming to places like Bar bali where uh you know the the global meridians meet and cross over creating a vortex so it becomes um a place where people can more easily raise their kundalini but it's got to be done with an experienced practitioner otherwise people can experience psychosis and this is what happens when, for instance, people go to a rave and they take drugs so that they're ungrounded and then they dance and they, um, because they're so open energetically because of the drugs, they uh, can have a spontaneous kundalini awakening, yeah, because they're accessing states of ecstasy and bliss. And the, the energy can go vroom from the base all the way up to the top of the crown in the head. And these people end up wigging out and thinking that they're, you know, the, the Messiah um, and, and having paranoid delusions and then needing uh, to be, um, for their own safety, um, you know, put into uh, medical... Uh, institutions to help them ground by taking uh, epilim, you know, which is primarily sodium as the active ingredient. It's salt, which is the element of the earth to ground them. So, um, you know, now that we're moving into the Aquarian age, more and more people are seeking unconsciously a Kundalini awakening because the Aquarian age is all about free energy. It's about accessing our life force again. Hence, the Star Wars films coming out. So we're needing to learn how to harness this energy safely and naturally. And that is what the Sacred Feminine taught. Um, and uh, that energy is rising in the earth. You know, there's a, 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 a current of energy that goes right up through the centre of the earth. And she is rising. She is waking up her children. So... Um, you know, 
hence more and more women are like, oh, yeah, I need to connect with my inner goddess. But it's not about just pampering and it's not about just doing yoga asanas. You know, um, I recently was contacted by a woman who's running goddess surf retreats and told, you know, I wasn't allowed to use the term goddess retreat anymore because she trademarked it. And, you know, I understand that she's, you know, trying to empower women by getting them on surfboards, but it's like, oh, my goodness, you know, we're literally in a world gone mad when somebody who's teaching the ancient sacred wisdom traditions of this goddess culture, this matriarchal culture that was around for thousands of years before the rise of empires like Rome that, you know, outlawed these teachings under the threat of death. Um, so, you know, it's really important that we take back our, our, our birthright as women and that is our culture. You know, if we look at Indigenous cultures, we see those that um, were disconnected from their culture were the ones that were most disempowered and women have been disconnected from their culture. We had 500 years of witch burnings and um, drownings and, you know, the Spanish Inquisition. I mean, millions of women were persecuted simply for practising their feminine uh, gifts, you know, such as herbalists, midwives um, and teachers of sacred feminine uh, teachings. So... You can see why I'm so passionate about this and it's, you know, um, important that we reach as many women as possible to shift this distortion in the collective consciousness as quickly as possible. So Kundalini is the electrical energy, like I said, that animates us. Um, so it's essential that we ground as we raise this energy. What do I mean by ground? Well, that we're in our bodies. So women that are starving themselves, for instance, um, you know, due to feeling that they, the perfect woman is a size zero so that they will be more lovable, more acceptable to themselves and others, the thinner they are, they risk not being grounded, yeah? So um, it's really important that we develop a, a healthy relationship with food and that's a healthy connection with the mother the mother is feeding us from the skirts of her of her uh, plentiful cornucopia of abundance and when we see that as sacred when we see it as communion when we see our bodies as sacred temples then we're not in the mind we're not uh, viewing our body as imperfect and criticizing it and starving it and being miserly towards it. We're wanting to nourish it with the most life affirming, um, you know, high resonance uh, foods that we can. So, um, you know, yes, self care is a part of being a goddess, but it's not, it's not the whole thing. So within our body, we have what are called nadis. Um, this, I love this image. Uh, Alex Gray, check out his work. Um, these are like the, the currents of electrical energy that run all through our energy bodies. You might have heard the term light bodies. So um, we have this incredible system um, which those in the East, the yogis, those that practice traditional Chinese medicine, um, understand that this is the key to promoting wellness. We have over 72,000 of these nadis running throughout our body. So purification of the nadis is how we ensure the healthy flow of our life force or prana. So when we get an energy block in these sort of astral energy tubes or meridians, that's when we start to see or experience physical symptoms. So first of all, it starts as an energy block. If we aren't connected with 
how we're feeling energetically will often override our nervous system and the signals that our nervous system is giving us. And this, if prolonged, will result, result in physical and mental dis-ease or emotional imbalance. So uh, yoga uh, works wonderfully, not just the physical asanas. You know, in the West, people often view yoga as more of a, a physical exercise. Um, you know, it's more about preparing the body for meditation um, through breath work, through mudra, through mantra, which is sacred sounds, um, through forming different, um, uh, you know, um, symbols with the hands to activate the flow of chi in different nadis. So, um, and opening up the archetypal awareness through yoga nidra, which is guided meditation. So, you know, yoga is not just about being as flexible as you can. Um, and what this does is it cleanses the nadis. It allows the blocks to clear and the energy to flow in the way that acupuncture does. And this strengthens our energy field so that, you know, we, uh, we feel lighter, stronger, and we glow. Like a, a, you think about a light bulb and the difference between, say, a 40-watt bulb and a 60-watt bulb. So a woman who's activated her goddess essence, her shakti, she has a bigger wattage, okay? She literally will light up a room. And it's not about the shape of her hips or the cup size of her breasts. It's about the energy that she has generated within herself. So this is an image of the chakras. I'm just going to have a drink to keep my throat moist because you lose a lot of moisture when you speak nonstop. So these are known as lotuses of light or wheels of light and they are vortices, vortices of energy and each one has a different colour ray that emits when it's open, when the energy is flowing freely and together they create what's called the yantra um, or the rainbow bridge, the bridge between heaven and earth. So when we open these lotuses, when the energy is flowing freely, we literally um, have this beautiful open connection to heaven. So we start downloading um, divine wisdom, divine truth, divine understanding. We don't need books and universities. That's the masculine way of learning. The feminine way of learning is through transmission. Um, and that is, again, the Aquarian age, what we're moving into. You know, the word intuition is becoming a buzzword. But this is how we strengthen our intuition by opening this central pillar so that we are a clear conduit uh, to anchor heaven on earth through us as a vessel. And that is what it means to be a goddess, to be a divine vessel, uh, an embodiment of the divine in feminine form. So here we see the chakras um, in relation to the nadis. Now, a chakra is where a lot of nadis intersect, okay? So it's like, um, you know, like a city of energy within our bodies. So the earth also has chakras. Um, you know, I'm sitting on one here in Bali. <laughs> um, so uh, people are drawn to places that are chakras in the earth in order to help clear and open their inner rainbow bridge. But um, we can do that with yogic practice and with uh, understanding, with receiving the teachings that open up the, the awareness, you know, truth is light, the light of truth. It illuminates us with a new awareness and, and all change starts with a single thought. 
So that's why when we're initiated into sacred teachings, when we receive a perspective, it opens seed within these lotuses of light. It's called the jewel within the lotus, yeah? And then the change unfolds like a flower. From that new awareness, we create new choices and we see change ripple out and we transform our life so that we're living a divine life, yeah? We're having a heavenly experience in physical form. You know, the Buddhists say life is suffering. It is if we're only operating out of those bottom three chakras, okay? If we're only perceiving life from the physical, emotional and lower mental realm, then life is one continual drama where we're striving for perfection and not attaining it. And this is what the collective consciousness is stuck in. But once we uh, awaken this inner serpent of light, the sacred feminine, then we um, awaken to new perspectives. We remember our soul and we access our subtle senses, which are our divine gifts, our clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, which is inner clear seeing, inner clear hearing, inner clear uh, sensing, our knowing. And then because the soul is anchored and listened to and dominant, you know, we're operating from the inside out, we start creating a more divine experience and life becomes more pleasurable, more sublime, more ecstatic, more bliss. And that doesn't mean that you don't ever have a bad day. Uh, I'll be speaking about that in my 13 Moons webinar if you want to join me for that one. But life does not have to be eternal suffering. So... Here we see a diagram of the three major nadis that run from the base energy center all the way up to what's called the third eye, which is where they meet deep in the center of the skull. And you can see they look like serpents, which is why they're called twin serpents or the twin flames. Um, a lot of people are looking for their twin flame soulmate, not understanding that first one has to awaken the twin flame serpents within us. Um, so uh, they're called Ida and Pingala, which is the feminine and masculine currents of energy, the lunar and solar energies within us. And they spiral around the central pillar of light called Sushumna. So... Um, this, as you can see, is, you know, the medical insignia, but it is a much more ancient symbol than that. It's called the caduceus, and it's simply a magic wand <laughs> with the meridians of kundalini, of sacred feminine, sacred masculine, fully awakened. And once we awaken these, we awaken our power as magicians, Magis, mages, ones who can direct the flow of energy with intention, with integrity, because one who has raised their serpents um, has deep understanding of the consequences of how they use their energy. So they're not going to be, you know, using black magic, you know, which is simply the unconscious use of energy, yeah, using energy to try and get more power, status, fame, greed, wealth, which is what we do when we're operating out of the lower three chakras, lower three energy centers. Those that really awaken their full power um, would never use it in a way that would harm. So when both of these uh, nadis, Ida and Pingala, are fully awakened, when they're activated, we are balanced. We have access to our feminine qualities and our masculine qualities, to our feminine gifts, to our masculine gifts. We are what is called the holy hermaphrodite. And that doesn't mean you grow both sets of genitals. It means that you are whole. You're not a half looking to be completed by your other half. So these meridians 
the way that we activate their full power and open the color ray of healing at each of these seven chakras or seven gates is by um, opening this serpent power as it was known. Uh, here we see a yogi, you know, and they're cobras, yeah, everywhere in Bali here you see images or sculptures and carvings of, of cobras. They understood this. It's why, you know, in ancient Egypt, the royals had the cobra as the insignia on their headdresses because one who had royal power was one who had awakened their kundalini, their serpent power. It was not just about, you know, you become king because your dad was king. That's a patriarchal distortion, handing down wealth, status and power through a bloodline. Um, the, the ancients, it was the high priest king or the high priestess queen, somebody who was enlightened, was considered fit to be the sacred leader. So when we activate this serpent power, this life force, we experience more vitality. We experience greater longevity. So we live longer. People used to live a lot longer. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, sort of modern history. I'm talking about ancient history, about the cultures like Lemuria, Atlantis, Mesopotamia, the first 17 dynasties of, of Egypt before it became patriarchal. So these advanced ancient civilizations that practiced raising their kundalini, they experienced greater creativity. You know, the artwork was phenomenal. Um, fertility. So we're seeing a mass fertility crisis on the planet um, because we're not honouring our life force. You know, we're eating GMOs, we've got chemtrails. I mean, just the amount of pollution in the air, the water, the food sources. Our life force has been diminishing. Um, so activating our kundalini um, is a wonderful way to activate your fertility. We also increase our libido because our life force is our sexual energy. It's one and the same. So if we're uh, caught up in suppression and shame of our sexual energy, um, you know, if we've shut it down because we're afraid of intimacy, then that will affect how much energy we can access on a daily basis. So when we activate our kundalini, we also experience more charisma. You know, as I spoke about, when we walk into a room and people go, wow, who's that? It's their energy field. It's this person who has a big energy field that people are responding to. Um, we increase our awareness, our self-awareness, because, you know, as we bring the energy up through each one of these seven electrical substations, these, and at each gate we refine the energy, um, we experience more epiphanies, more aha moments, uh, you know, more of those light bulbs going off where we, we get downloads, we get understanding. And all of this increases our personal power not to exert over others we don't need to when we feel empowered when we have inner power and that's what this awakening gives us so this is why we've been told to fear serpents to fear uh, our serpent power so the doctrines that were brought in by ancient rome uh you know 300 years i might add after the um, the powers that be hunted Jesus down and drove him out of town um, was because they didn't want people awakening their power because an awakened populace cannot be ruled and dominated through fear, through uh, guilt and through, um, you know, the promise of, money and status if they if they tow the line so the feminine was seen as the greatest threat to the power base of the empiric rule so um you know hence 
the creation myth of Eve. Um, I speak about that in, in greater detail in my book, The Inner Goddess Makeover, about the origins of that story um, and, of course, the apple that she's holding as well. So I won't get into that here or we'll be here for another hour. But um, if you enjoy storytelling, you might want to check that book out. Um, so, you know, we need to take back our power by taking, uh, having more awareness about the stories that have shaped our conditioning, our psyche, our awareness. And if we've been told from birth to fear serpents that women um, should just do what they're told, um, otherwise they'll, you know, make everyone unhappy um, if, they, if they do what they feel to do, if they're curious, like Pandora in the Greeks, that they'll be punished. These were patriarchal distortions of the earlier myths. Um, in my book, Creating Sacred Union Within, I go through what those patriarchal distortions of the myths are and uh, the, the sharing of what my downloads are of the, the earlier pre-patriarchal um, myths were, if you're interested. So um, I'm just going to take another slurp of my tea. So when the serpents of consciousness rise within us, the people rise, okay? It's that, you know, here we have a very ancient Babylonian priestess depicted dancing with a serpent. You know, this was not just something which was done for entertainment, which is what it's been reduced to, you know, in Turkish restaurants or strip clubs. But, um, you know, women revered the power of serpents, you know, they would literally ingest the poison and go into trance states. It was a part of their healing. I mean, you know, they communed with these beings. So how do we awaken our serpentine meridian within us, our life force? Through spiritual initiation into the ancient sacred feminine teachings and practices. And these are what empower the seven aspects of our feminine psyche. Um, I'll explain what I mean. There are seven um, expressions or faces of the goddess. And each one resides in one of these seven energy centers, one of these seven chakras. So because as women, we've chosen to incarnate into a female form this lifetime. We have literally put up our hands to heal and empower the feminine as our foundation gender for our own healing as a soul, to heal the lineage of our ancestors and those yet to be born, and to heal the collective, to heal the feminine in the collective, which has been oppressed and distorted and misunderstood for 5,000 years. So um, these days there's a lot of gender confusion and it's because these teachings are needing to restore our sense of wholeness by, you know, uh, initiating people into the fact that we're all feminine and masculine energy, yeah? And... So none of us are completely female or completely male, but we need to start the healing and empowerment journey with our foundation gender because our soul has chosen with knowing beyond what our conscious mind, what our 10% rational mind can comprehend, that that's what in this lifetime we chose to heal predominantly. When we've activated and healed the, the feminine, then the next stage is to start getting to know our masculine archetypes, the seven faces of the inner God, and then we learn to balance our feminine and masculine expression. And it doesn't matter whether we're heterosexual, whether we're gay, whether we're trans, we all have feminine, masculine, 
equally accessible to us. We all have the seven faces of the goddess and the God within us. So it doesn't matter how we express our love, whether that's male, female, 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 male, male. What's important is that we access all of these um, divine parts of our psyche so that the quality of our relating is awakened, is aware, is mutually honouring. So let's meet the seven chakra goddesses. So the seven faces of the goddess that reside in each of these seven major energy centres. So the archetype, the psychological aspect that governs the base chakra is the primal woman. If we're not connected with our inner wild woman, we are not able to access our power, our connection with the earth mother. We're not able to be authentic. We're not able to express, um, you know, what it is we need to do in the moment. You know, we'll second guess it, we'll suppress it. We can't access um, our anger. So, you know, if you can't express and access your anger when it's appropriate by saying, I feel frustrated or I feel angry or, you know, being able to let it out, and just, Arr! if you can't do that, you are blocking the flow of life force at the first gate and you will always feel tired. Yeah, you won't make the changes that you need to make in your life to feel fully alive. You won't be living a passionate life. Yeah, because you'll be afraid of making others angry. Or when you feel angry, you'll burst into tears and your tears will, you know, drown out the inner pilot light. Um, you know, I'm so angry because as little girls, we're given the message in a patriarchal culture don't throw tantrums. Nobody wants to see that. Whereas when we cry, oh, we get compassion and a cuddle. So a lot of women growing up feel, okay, anger's not wanted. I need to pack my wild woman away, my wild child away into Pandora's box. And when she's suppressed, then she comes out as, you know, menstrual pain, as passive aggression, um, as self-loathing so you know we need to befriend this archetype we need her on board as we do all seven governing the next uh, energy center the emotional center we have the beautiful muse so this is the archetype of the lover and the beloved so one who sees her own beauty celebrates her own beauty and is able to receive and express sensual pleasure for pleasure's sake. So she's, when she's disempowered, she's trying to prove how beautiful she is. She's trying to get validation externally. Do you think I'm beautiful? Do you think I'm pretty? Do you think I'm lovable? And this is what keeps women in a, you know, a trap, a, like a rat on a wheel of constantly buying more and more cosmetics and, um, you know, only being seen with a full face of makeup and feeling like they need to look a certain way to be beautiful when we've all, we're all like a unique sculpture, you know. So the key here is self-love. Um, when this archetype is on board, we're completely unselfconscious about expressing our beauty. We do it to delight in our in ourselves um, and it's kind of like you know um, a little toddler who's naked playing on the beach she's not worried about her chubby thighs so we look at her with the same self-acceptance that she has for herself this unselfconscious attitude about her own natural beauty so the more self-acceptance we find the more beautiful other people see us in the solar plexus, we experience the archetype of the golden heroine. This is the stateswoman, the, the woman who um, strives to make a difference, to make the world a better place by using strategy, 
by um, building something, uh, a legacy of great worth. Um, so here we see the Greek Athena to the Roman, she was called Minerva, but she's the archetype of the craftswoman, the woman who um, uses or hones her, her skills to create something of great uh, value, great meaning, and offers it up to civilization. She's a creator of culture. Um, you know, in, in the myths, she would uh, preside over crafts during peacetime and over war during wartime, but she was not bloodthirsty. Just wait for that outdoor noise. Um, she only fought to uphold an ideal. So, uh, and she would use her wits. She was a strategist. This is why Athens was named after Athena. There's a story I share about that um, in my Inner Goddess book. Um, so, yeah, I won't get into it here. But she's like the inner career woman, the golden girl. She wants to achieve greatness um, out in the world to make the world a better place. And we have all these archetypes within us. Some we will have developed more than others. And the idea is to identify which ones are running in a dysfunctional way, in a shadow way, and self-sabotaging that area of our life and empower them through understanding. So in the heart, we have the inner mother, the earth empress. This is our ability to identify our feelings so we can nurture and caretake our needs on a cyclic basis by understanding the cyclic wisdom of the feminine. So when we can do that for ourselves, we don't unconsciously project mother onto other people by, you know, expecting them to listen to all our dramas like a sounding board. You know, we have um, cyclic routines that uh, help us to feel held like the red tent, where we're mothered by a circle of women each month um, so that, you know, we're not denying our needs and then going into what's called dark mother, you know, somebody who is resentful and gives from a place of resentment. So they're always, you know, these big heavy sighs with what they give and, you know, there's strings attached. So the number of women that are suffering breast cancer is an indicator of how women are expected to give in a patriarchal culture and not receive equally in return. Yeah, we've been conditioned to think a good woman gives of herself until there's nothing left to give. And our breasts are sounding the alarm and saying, no, I can't mother everybody at a cost to myself. Yeah, in the ancient world, the mother was revered. Um, so, yeah, we're needing to reclaim those customs that support women in the mothering phase to fill their cup on a regular basis so they don't burn out, get ill and die. So governing the throat chakra, the energy centre located in the throat is the Amazon. Now, a lot of women are seeking this goddess archetype out um, thinking this is what it is to be a goddess, yeah, to be a warrior goddess, to be an Amazon. And it's one aspect. It's not the whole deal. But the reason a lot of women go for this one is they see power in it. You know, I know I grew up thinking the feminine was weak, um, that it was subservient, that it was vulnerable. So I didn't want to associate with my feminine. I disassociated from it. And when I found some power in the feminine, I latched onto that. So we see a lot of women latching onto this archetype, you know, really, it's kind of like hippie power dressing, you know, wearing the boots, wearing the leather, shaving up one side of their head, trying to appear tough, which is often signaling that there's unhealed wounds inside and they haven't developed the ability to speak out on their own behalf to protect themselves by always speaking their truth. Um, so you can see the bear with her, you know, she's about finding our um, inner protector um, and 
those of you that have read my book, Goddess Wisdom, I speak about that in the Red Riding Hood story, you know, the inner woodcutter that we need to develop um, and why girls in their maidenhood um, will often act tough. You know, I used to wear Doc Martens and swear a lot after I'd been raped because unconsciously I was putting out the message, don't fuck with me, you know, like I can protect myself when really that's just telegraphing. I actually don't know how to develop the inner power. The throat is the, the second power center. The base is the first. And this is when we develop the ability to express who we are inside out in the world. So she's the medicine woman. She's very much about healing through sisterhood. The next archetype is the mystic, the inner wise woman who resides in the third eye. So the brow chakra um, deep within the forehead. And this is, um, you know, the, what was called a witch and denounced, but the word witch just comes from a wit woman, a woman with her wits about her, a wise woman a woman with great wisdom who understood the mysteries of life because she'd gone deep within herself, deep to the womb, the cosmic womb of the great mother. Every time that she bled, every time she cycled down um, into the states of deep stillness in the void, being at one with the unknowable great mystery. So, again, that's something I go into more in my 13 Moons webinar if you want to join me for that. So this archetype, because her gifts are unseen, they're all in the inner realms. You know, these are often the women that have a very strong mystic archetype that will end up working as clairvoyance um, um, and, you know, wisdom channels, you know, writing channel books and often have a journey with depression so we need to reframe and understand depression from a mystical perspective um, a lot of women start experiencing more depression when they start cycling with the moon it's linked and i speak about that um, in my red tent course as well as the 13 moons finally the tantrika this is the yogini the goddess who governs the crown chakra the one who knows she is a divine conduit and um, so she honors her divine nature through a daily practice through uh, weekly practices in alignment with the lunar cycle through monthly and seasonal practices through annual practices so her life becomes divine through sacred ceremony through devotional bhakti worship. So um, this is when we embody the goddess. Uh, she is the one who, I'll just wait for that moment, has descended deep within herself to unveil all seven archetypes. She is the queen, the goddess of love. Um, known as Ishtar to the Babylonians. She's like the resurrected goddess, the mature Aphrodite, the goddess of love who's been to hell and back and who has found self-love and has filled her own cup. So she's not looking to be completed. She's sacred and sovereign unto herself. When all archetypes are expressed, we've activated that rainbow bridge within us. So we have one foot here on earth and one foot in heaven. We know that we are holy by divine design and not that we're superior to anyone. We are all reflections of the divine. But the more that we journey to reclaim these lost, hidden, unseen aspects like a jigsaw puzzle, we put ourselves back together, you know, it's like we have the pieces of the puzzle to be integrated, to feel whole, to know our whole selves. And when we're operating from that holistic self, then um, 
life becomes holy and we feel like a queen. So whilst you will see more and more pop quizzes asking which Greek goddess are you, um, we know better. We are not one type. Yes, you might have one that's dominant, but a goddess is a woman that embodies all of them. She is multifaceted. So, yes, you will see books, Facebook pages and apps dedicated to glorifying one goddess archetype, such as the warrior goddess or the wild woman or the goddess of love. But these are just one piece of the puzzle. For our goddess essence to flow, it needs to uh, be through all seven gates. That's Shakti. That's Shakti power. I love this image. This is from a beautiful goddess deck called the Goddess Oracle. And the artwork is by uh, Hirana Janto. It's just exquisite. So we need to learn to empower and balance all of our seven inner goddesses. Here we can see what this looks like internally when we understand how to connect, how to send our roots deep into the, the earth and access the Shakti of the earth to uh, fuel that awakening up through the seven gates, which govern the seven energy layers of our aura, of our energy field. So you can see as we open each gate, we open up another level of our energy field. We become a bigger, greater being of light. And we experience life on all dimensions then. Because each one of those chakras was once known as the eyes of God being able to see different dimensions. So you don't need acid, you don't need ayahuasca. We can do this naturally. And this is, is not something new. In the ancient world, women would unveil each facet of their feminine psyche. And then once they had completed this priestess initiation over you know, seven months, unveiling, understanding, it being initiated into the seven faces of the goddess on the day of the great rite, on the spring equinox, at the temple, in the centre of town, the priestesses would dance, the sacred dance of the seven veils, depicting that journey, unveiling the expression of the seven faces of the goddess. Everyone would take the day off work and watch this. It symbolised they had unveiled the seven facets of their soul. So they were revered as holy and these women uh, were the ones who were ready for the rite of sacred marriage. The women that had done this initiation were the ones that were sought after by men in positions of power, by kings who wanted a queen beside them that had fully activated her feminine power, been initiated into the mysteries and was regal within herself. Um, and not only that, when we've unveiled these seven aspects within ourselves, then we can have holy communion with our beloved and meet each aspect of the God and goddess within uh, when we lie with them Okay, you know, sex, people think in the West it's a physical act. It's an energetic communion between these inner twin serpents. So the more gates that we open, the more ecstatic the union, the meeting between souls. If you're interested in that, you might want to check out my Sacred Union books uh, and also my Rainbow Bridge Retreat. So to commit, to connect at every gate with our beloved, women would first do this as a preparation for marriage so that they would then attract into their field a man who had awakened 
his seven aspects and could meet them at every gate. So they didn't outgrow their man. They didn't feel, you know, look, I can share some things with him, but he can't meet me in my spiritual realms. And this is where our modern day custom of unveiling the bride comes from. You know, we, we enact these, but they're empty in our modern day rituals. They're, they're now devoid of their original meanings. Um, in my rites of passage facilitator training, I go into this in more detail. But once you had unveiled your soul, then your soulmate could see you. Yeah. If we haven't unveiled our soul, we're not going to find our ultimate, you know, twin flame soulmate because we haven't done the inner work, yeah? Instead, what we attract is somebody who feels like they complete us. So we don't need to do that inner journey to become whole, but then we become dependent on them to feel whole. And that's why codependence is the norm in relationships in a patriarchal culture with one embodying the feminine polarity and one embodying the masculine energy polarity, regardless of whether it's hetero, um, gay, lesbian. Um, and that's what we're outgrowing. Our consciousness is outgrowing that old paradigm of relationship, which I speak about in my sacred union books. So in ancient Greece, here we see uh, the ruins of the um, temple at Delphi where the oracular priestesses would uh, receive transmissions from the divine and people would queue up all day to, to speak to these women and to hear their, their channeled truths. But what the women studied here uh, was to know themselves. That's what's etched into the stone there, know thyself, because that is the feminine way that we go deep within, that we get to know our souls. When we know ourselves, then we are truly awakened. And that's what we come here to do. That's our soul lesson. And a woman who knows herself is self-assured. And then she can fulfill her potential in all areas of her life. Because when we unveil all seven aspects of our divine feminine expression, we unveil our true self, our soul. And our soul is a diamond. It's multifaceted like a diamond. So we shine brighter. You think about it, white light, when it refracts, it makes every color of the rainbow. So the blueprint of our soul, it's this, this beautiful diamond um, sort of uh, fractal, this sacred geometry. So, you know, when we move, we are emitting rainbow light. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the women that activate this within themselves, they activate uh, their, their, their inner diamond. And then this practice was reduced to buying a diamond ring. But that's what made a woman, you know, of value, that she had a, a big nugget on her finger that... She'd been given a diamond by a man who had acquired wealth, status and power by doing what the empire said was the thing to do, not listening to his heart, and, you know, um, yeah, raping and pillaging the earth, basically. Um, so we are all a diamond in the rough, okay? And the difference is how do we become crystal clear? By working with our shadow, by going into what feels hard and heavy and dense and bringing the light of truth to that so that we become, we have more clarity, yeah? And then we, become, we emanate more light. We become a vessel for the force. So our challenge is to transform the shadow into light at each gate. Our shadow is as divine as the light. It's as much our sacred teacher. When we're afraid of the shadow, we run away from it. Oh, I'm afraid of the dark. Yeah, oh, that's dark, that's evil. But when we understand that we all go equally into the light and the dark, and the more we understand our dark side, the more we are responsible for it, the more we don't unconsciously act it out and destroy life. 
the more mature we are physically, emotionally, mentally, energetically. So this, this journey, this descent process, this initiation path, this is what creates an inner shift from being the inner princess who's looking for someone else to gift her happiness, like the knight in shining armour, looking for the one or trying to be, you know, the most beautiful girl in all the land or striving to be famous um, to validate that she's, you know, of worth. That's princess. Queen is a woman who is knows her value, knows her worth, knows her own heart, knows her own mind, leads with her intuition because she is self-governing. She's done this process. So this sacred feminine power has been dormant on our planet for 5,000 years. It's time to wake up and restore the sacred balance on our planet. Yeah, things are at crisis point. Now, the word crisis, of course, translates to mean opportunity. So we have an opportunity. We can turn this around, but we need to activate our power to do that, to create a new uh, paradigm of heaven on earth. That's what we're here to do. And you're here in a body because you literally responded to a cosmic call out. The earth is in trouble. We need help. Anyone that's willing to come and incarnate to help this planet do so now. And you responded to the call, and so did I. And our stellar friends, yeah, the Arcturians, they're leaving these beautiful sacred art mandalas to open up the inner nadis, to open up the, the chakras. When we look at this, you know, sacred art, they're urging us to awaken the sacred feminine, to awaken our goddess power. So, I have an invitation for you. <laughs> um, and I would like to share it with you. So, if you feel like you're ready to receive this initiation, um, then come with me and I'll explain what it is that I offer. Um, there's, you know, opportunity to accelerate your feminine potential to activate that diamond blueprint within your energy field. Um, and there's two options. So um, they're both step-by-step -step programs. So they're safe ways of integrating these archetypal energies and awakening and raising your Kundalini, your Shakti step-by-step. -step. And I've done this for over 20 years. So um, you know, I'm experienced in this as a facilitator. There's an online program. So uh, that's called the Inner Goddess Makeover online course. And it aligns to start with the equinox. So the program starts twice a year. There's two intakes a year. So when you register, um, you will receive all the info that you need in the new, well, the new moon prior to the equinox. That's when you start. Um, so this aligns with both the seasonal chakras and the lunar cycle. And we journey one chakra a month because women uh, are governed by the lunar cycle. You know, our bodies have a monthly cycle. Even if you no longer bleed, you continue to cycle energetically. So this is a journey for women regardless of whether... You're in the maiden, the mother, the mage, or the wise woman phase of your life. And it's an opportunity to empower every facet of your feminine psyche. It's like opening Pandora's box and one month at a time going in and addressing the shadow issues, the wounds, the shame, the judgment, the self-loathing, the self-criticism in every facet of your womanhood. Um, so that you can also see the, your divinity at each gate, your gifts, your strengths, your power, that each one of these aspects um, 
is offering you when you understand it. So there are processes that I give you in your monthly module to help experientially clear the blocks in your uh, seven energy centers. And these are, if left unaddressed, blocks which inhibit the expression of your divine authentic self, your seven authentic um, expressions of the goddess. So this is what the course includes. You get shipped out to you um, the paperback edition. It's the revised edition of my Inner Goddess Makeover book. Um, this book has been loved by uh, countless women the world over that have absolutely loved it. It's a workbook. Um, so you'll be working through this book um, along with all the course resources. Um, you will also receive, uh, you know, what's called Yoga Nidra, a guided inner meditation, an inner journey to identify which chakra goddess is the one who is in crisis, the one who most needs healing and empowerment. And as you can see, I recommend getting offline and downloading it to your iPod or iPad and listening to it in the bath or on the couch under a tree, even though it's an online course, I really encourage women to get offline with the resources as much as possible. So if you don't like being in the digital space, don't worry, you don't have to be. There's also seven guided meditations to meet and receive gifts and um, teachings from each one of these inner goddess archetypes and um, this is something that I uh, in your course materials is part of a sacred bathing rite at, at new moon uh, there's also video tutorials to help you get to know these seven aspects and empower them that's me as um, Artemis you know the warrior goddess and uh, my inner wild woman, Lilith. <laughs> um, there's heaps of magazine-style articles um, that you get every month, and you can either print these out so that you can, you know, read them while you're waiting for the kids to finish basketball or dancing or read them on public transport on your way trans, uh, transiting to work and back. Um, or just read them to wind down to get off screens at the end of the day. Um, you might want to compile them into a ring binder and, and make a, you know, a folder of your priestess journey. Um, but they're deliberately uh, sort of done in a magazine style format so that they're relaxing. This is about the joy of learning. It's not about, you know, having to read thick compendiums of small font um, you know, it's about, yeah, a leisurely process. You'll also have shipped out to you seven uh, auric sprays. These are um, aromatherapy chakra sprays that I made. Basically, I was guided to make these. Um, and what happened was I would meditate with each goddess archetype and they would speak intuitively, guiding me as to which oils they wanted in their blend. And um, they would then lead me drop by drop to create the elixir so that there was a base, a middle and a treble node. And when I looked up the healing properties of the oils that they'd asked me to use, they were absolutely perfect for each archetype. And then in addition to the aromatherapy, I was guided to create crystal vibrational essences. So I did these um, at the moon sign and moon phase that corresponded to each goddess archetype. I actually did it at full moon. That's you know the time when the feminine energy is luminous uh, in the astrological sign that uh, is the correspondent to each goddess archetype. And uh, I speak about those in the Inner Goddess book for those that are curious. 
and I'd use sacred geometry and the crystals for each chakra um, to create a crystal essence and then I covered that with the colored silk uh, silk is the highest vibrational uh, cloth because it's woven by silkworms you know it's considered the best for meditation and I put that in the Sun so the solar and lunar light could infuse the elixir for 24 hours and then I brought it in and I did the Sanskrit toning to open that chakra and I also uh, enchanted the elixir by uh, speaking all the positive traits and gifts of that archetype and those that are familiar with the work of um, Dr. Emoto knows that uh, water is a mutable receptive element it's an, a, the feminine element and it takes on the qualities of whatever vibrations are permeated through sound into it um, you know his work you can see that he's photographed under high octane microscopes, water molecules that have had words like love and the beloved, and they create beautiful sort of snowflake uh, sacred geometry mandalas, whereas those that had negative words would fracture. So these are like a healing in a bottle. And in the course um, it's advised that you use them on a daily basis for the month that you're working with that goddess archetype before your daily Shakti yoga um, and um, you know when before you do your art therapy your act of beauty each month um, when you're doing the sacred ceremonies that I uh, guide you to do at new moon and full moon so you know you can keep it in your handbag as a personal spritzer to uplift you um, but it's it's like it literally anchors all the positive traits um, of that goddess archetype within your energy field so that's there as a support um, the shipping is separate um, just because it's not fair if somebody lives you know in Switzerland and someone lives in Melbourne I'm shipping these from Melbourne so um, that's why the shipping is separate so that it's you know a fair sort of user pays system there are also monthly self-love chakra bathing rituals you know the original goddess temples were spas they were the springs the grottos women understood that the element of water had great healing properties so each month you have a new sacred bathing rite uh, to do and at full moon there's a rite to do to awaken the shakti in the world soul so we come together as a force for change for collective good you know uh, jesus said when two or more are gathered in my name when we when women come together we are a force to be reckoned with all that psychic power all that shakti so this is how we change the world um, through the raising of our divine power through sacred ceremony through channeled intention each month you also receive monthly chakra fact sheets so you know you've got like a thumbnail of oh right i know how to work with this energy center You'll also have uh, Shakti yoga instruction. So I've done videos of the mudras, the mantras and Kundalini chakra uh, asanas or kriyas. You'll also get um, active meditations like shaking and dancing through the chakras that are just 10 minutes long. So you can just, you know, do alternate what you do so that you don't get bored, but it's a way to really wake up your energy before you start your day um, and for those of you with young kids you can do it with young kids so you know um, this isn't something that you know you need uh, to be you know somebody who's got their own yoga shala their own yoga studio and, and headspace it's uh, user-friendly um, and also kundalini workout tips each month um, so how to really stimulate the flow of of chi of prana in each energy center um, you'll also get exclusive uh, membership we've got a, a sisterhood forum so you are sharing this journey with women
from all around the world who have also gone, I need to do this. They've responded to an inner call from their soul. And this is because they are the women that have done this in other lifetimes, that have served as priestesses in temples and in mystery schools. You know, so there's a lot of beautiful soul connections that happen, which then allow for networking, for travel opportunities, you know. So there's a lot of sharing that happens, um, not just during the course, but once you finish it and you can come back and do it on a cyclic basis, you know, every year. Traditionally, women would do this descent process during the autumn and winter uh, when our focus, our attention it naturally goes deep within. So um, that's, you know, I really encourage you to share how you're going, particularly the two, first two weeks of every month when you're really working with the shadow of an archetype. Around full moon, we then get the insights and the next two weeks we're then integrating the, the, the positive traits of the archetype. But access this support, you know, we're not meant to heal uh, or to take this journey alone. So this is your your online sisterhood hub and there's beautiful sharing, you know, naked, vulnerable sharing. I don't mean physically naked. I mean emotionally and psychologically on that forum. So this is what you'll personally gain. And I know this because, A, I've journeyed it and I've, you know, facilitated it for so many women that have experienced this. And that's increased self-understanding, self-acceptance, self-assurance, insight to correct self-sabotaging patterns, practical tools and experiential processes, access to a network of self-aware women worldwide, renewed creativity and inspiration, alignment with your highest potential and life purpose, recognition of your unconscious archetypal issues, validation and empowerment of your feminine gifts, and a really fun and deeply affirming and unforgettable life experience. And there's no assignments, there's no assessments. You don't have to, you know, seek any validation from me as an external authority figure because you are your authority figure. Um, there's no time-specific webinars because we have women logging on from all different time zones. So you just log on when it suits you around your lifestyle around your commitments and watch the 10 minute videos and you know read the articles and do the meditations it's just you know what works for you so there's no pressure no stress and if life gets in the way you've got lifetime access okay so you can come back to this you can share it with your daughters your granddaughters so this is a taste of what other women have said that have experienced this. Um, Anna says, You've, you gave me a new understanding of myself and other women. You've given me a creative explosion. I'll be recommending you to other women who need you in their lives. Uh, Alice says, Tanishka's Goddess Course has taught me to embrace all aspects of myself and has helped me recognise all these aspects will help me be successful in both my personal and professional life, resulting in a better sense of balance and well-being. And Melinda says, I no longer let others direct and dictate my life. I am in the driver's seat. And I relate to that. You know, when I was a young maiden, before I was initiated into women's mysteries, I was a pleaser. Yeah, but that all shifted when I received my initiation. And when I did, I went, I need to commit my life to initiating women. So I've been doing that the last 22 years. Bronwyn says, this course brought me back from a brink of powerlessness I didn't even know I was balancing on. So that's the Inner Goddess online course. If you're interested, um, this is what you receive and what it's valued at. It's not what you are charged, but there's seven monthly modules so you receive one module every month and you get a reminder in your inbox to say when it's available to keep you on track um, you'll also have the seven aromatherapy sprays the lifetime membership of the sisterhood forum and your inner goddess makeover book so all of that is valued at um, 1410 in us currency i just 
do that as it's considered the global currency. But that isn't what you pay. You pay a fraction of that. So it's only $570 for a seven-month course. And I've got a special discount offer. So the first 20 women who sign up for the next intake, it's only $470. So you save another $100 US dollars off it, but that's only if you're one of those first 20. Um, and you still get that discount if you choose to pay by the month. So you can either pay up front and pay, you know, $470 and just get it over and done with, um, or if you want to pay uh, by the month, with that discount, it's only $67.14 a month. So, yeah, if you need to budget it out, then there's a way for it to be accessible. The other option is to be personally facilitated through this as uh, an intensive goddess immersion in my live retreat. So um, this is the inner goddess retreat. And as you can see, the journey is about learning to dance with the shadow at the seven gates. So you'll be joining women in person from all around the world, all ages, all backgrounds, all professions. It's, you know, I call it the UN of goddesses. It's an incredible experience to sit with 22 women from all around the world and take this journey. Um, and I, I cap the numbers at 22 um, and we journey those seven goddesses, one chakra a day, one goddess a day. And the women literally change before my very eyes. They look different physically at the end of the week than they did at the beginning. And it's, it's you know, the greatest blessing to watch that transformation occur. So it's an eight day intensive. Um, and I deliberately set it in an island paradise, <laughs> somewhere where the meridians of the earth are going to support your kundalini activation. You'll uh, every day experience daily trance dance, and that's not about being a great dancer. That's about embodying each archetype through movement with your eyes closed to sound. It includes yoga nidra, so guided meditation, but instead of that being recorded, I will be doing that live. Every day we will do mantras, mudras, yantras, and kundalini yoga. There will be experiential processes that I personally facilitate you through. Some will be on your own, others will be in pairs, others will be in groups, others will be in circle. We have daily sacred ceremonies to initiate you into the power of each one of these seven goddess aspects. And you'll also receive some pampering to help you really receive, step into greater receptivity, greater self-love, greater acceptance of pleasure and beauty. And you will literally make friends for life Every single year that I've run this, the women create a private Facebook page and they are sharing on that page every day and it continues year in, year out. These women catch up with each other. They, you know, visit each other around the world because they share so deeply, so profoundly and experience such transformation with each other, holding that space for each other, witnessing each other, that the depth of sisterly love is beyond what they could have imagined when they turn up on that first day. So it's been a sellout event every year. So, um, you know, if you feel called to join me for that, do it sooner rather than later so that you don't... Um, you know, to avoid disappointment. Um, there has been a waiting list in the past, but, you know, it's very rare that people drop out. So um, those that are coming internationally, um, you will need, um, you know, full lodging and accommodation and airport transfers. 
So the first option is to pay up front and then you'll see it will save $200 if you can pay in one payment. So that's well worth doing. Uh, that's 200 US, all the prices are in US. But there's also an option again to make it accessible. If you feel, yes, I want to do this in person, there's a six month payment plan, but that needs to be paid in full before the start of the retreat. So the next payment plan starts April 15 for the next retreat starting in September, September 18 in Bali. Um, and so if you want to make payment plans and stagger the payments, then um, book sooner rather than later. Now, I've also got an option for those who are local residents here in Ubud in Bali. Um, so if you want to come as a daily participant, um, lunch will be included, but there are a very limited number of places for non-residential participants. So you need to get in early if you don't want to miss out on one of those places. So again, there's a $200 US discount if you pay up front. And there's also the six month payment option there. Again, uh, you have to start that before April 15 to be eligible. So that's everything. You can go to my website, themoonwoman.com and click on events if you want to find out more details about the retreat. If you want to find out more details about the Inner Goddess online course, click on um, the online course option. Okay, now I'm just going to uh, stop sharing my screen so we can open up for questions. Hi, we've got some more that have joined us. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Tyler. I'm sure there's more women that don't fit on the screen right now, but um, lovely to have you with us. Okay, so I'm going to open it up for any questions. Um, you're welcome to unmute your microphone by just taking your cursor down to the bottom left of your screen and when you take your cursor down, the, the microphone will become visible. If you need to ask a question, click that and the red line will go away showing that it's unmuted. If you're not asking a question, please mute your mic so we don't get background sound. If you feel a bit shy about speaking in front of everyone, take your cursor over to the thought bubble to the chat option, click that and type your question. And I'm going to click that now just to um, see what's written here. Okay. Sarah says the nadis must be the muscle twitching I always feel about 10 times a day. You got it. Yeah. Look, when we activate our Shakti, you'll often get like electrical surges. For me, I'll often experience them in one particular chakra. If I'm clearing a block, I don't even need to know what the story is, you know, or what the wound is I'm releasing, or I'll get a rush of Kundalini from my base up to my crown. This happens often as a confirmation of truth when I get a, a download intuitively. So absolutely, that's Shakti. Uh, Jennifer says, thank you. I love this webinar. I've been doing the inner work. I'd be interested in the soul twin flame information you have. I'll look on your site. Cool. Um, this work's much needed right now. Thank you for adhering the call. Blessed be. Blessings. You might also be interested, Jennifer. I've um, just secured last night a venue to do my Rainbow Bridge Retreat here in Bali, which is um, activating the inner God and Goddess at all seven gates. I do recommend, if you haven't done uh, the seven-month journey or the inner Goddess Retreat, that you don't jump straight into trying to activate masculine, feminine straight off the bat, yeah? Step by step. So, you know, work with your feminine archetypes before trying to create the inner marriage. But if you've, you know done the journey with the feminine and awaken those the next installments about to be launched so stay tuned if you're not um, uh, signed up to my free astro oracle or you can upgrade to the paid version if you want the full astro um, forecast every new moon and full moon then you'll get um, 
be the first to know when registrations open and the details about any other live events. Um, okay, any other questions, either typed or spoken? No? I've overwhelmed you with information perhaps? <laughs> Well, I hope it's been of value to you um, and that, you know, it's precipitated your synapses, you know, bringing in downloads. You might need to just go and have some integration time, some yin time, journal write, you know, maybe come back and watch it again. Um, you know, use this as a learning tool. Um, bless you, Jen. Jen has said you're welcome to email any questions that you think of later. So in the chat, you'll see um, the email address there. And um, yeah, I look forward to facilitating you, those that feel called to journey with me personally, it would be my honor to initiate you. Those of you that, um, you know, I understand if you've got young kids, sometimes you just can't <laughs> go halfway across the world and do it, then, you know, I hope that you absolutely love journeying through these goddesses in sisterhood with this, that support online. Um, Michelle says, thank you. This was wonderful. I've had you in a goddess book for a few years now. Love it. Thanks, Michelle. Sarah says, for someone who's met their twin flame, does the inner union have to happen to come into 3D union? Um, look, you know, Everybody you speak to has a different take on that. What resonates as truth for me is that our beloved is our teacher and our mirror. So when the student is ready, the teacher appears. When we have done that inner preparation of awakening the twin flame serpents within, then we will call into our field. It's time for the next lesson in self mastery to initiate each other into the next level of um, God, goddess within through the meeting with that divine uh, complement through with the beloved. So I personally don't feel that, um, you know, we can meet with our true beloved until we've done that inner work. They're a reflection the people we attract to us will have done as much inner work as we have unless we're caught in codependency and we're trying to rescue people. We're falling in love with their potential, which is what a lot of priestess women do, you know, and then we try to facilitate them. And in doing that, we betray ourselves. And it's really because we're afraid of perhaps never being met of really doing that journey of aloneness, however long it takes to create that wholeness within, you know. I mean, I sit here, I've been celibate for three years now, and each time that I've chosen a partner, uh, and you'll probably recognise this in your own lives, that it's a wiser choice than the one before because they're a reflection of, the awareness that we've garnered within ourselves from our own lessons, you know? So this quest to find the twin flame, it's kind of it can get hijacked by the ego. Like then I've attained it. Then I've, you know, the end of the journey, I've, I've, I've completed the game, you know, or whatever, you know, this is an eternal journey. So, um, you know, there are many soulmates in my book, um, well, both sacred union books, I speak about the difference between soulmates and twin flames. You know, we often experience a union that is very tumultuous with somebody who ignites our twin flames. And it's so intense that we can feel, oh, this is the twin flame. This, you know, but they've come in to show us. Um, what is not healed within us. So they're the very intense attractions where the sex is just, you know, blows open all the nadis and it brings up all the stuff that's not healed. I've done videos on YouTube about this as well. And we 
wound each other and then we pull apart from each other at each gate to try and transmute that poison and we can't stay away the sex is too good and then we come back together and we re-wound and pull apart at each gate this is a journey of initiation but it is not in my knowing in my what sits in my body as truth the union with the beloved you know the the high priest king and the high priestess queen that is the embodiment of the holy couple that was embodied by Mari, the Magdalene, and Yeshua, you know, um, you know, and that is what we're here to do. But, you know, I mean, I've been doing the inner work for 22 years. I will be 48. I still have not met the beloved, but I'm not, you know, looking, looking, <laughs> you know, I'm actually pretty damn content uh, you know because each year i feel more whole more sovereign i've got so much love in my life i've got bhakti love devotional love i've got self-love i've got sisterly love i've got brotherly love you know i fill my cup constantly to overflowing so you know i'm not looking for the one in one person which is shadow aphrodite so i know that's a very long answer to and i you know but yeah, I just, I think in, particularly in the West, we're caught up in this fast gratification, quick gratification mentality. And it's like, you know, there's so many people on YouTube saying, yeah, you know, how to find your twin flame. And I just, we're just beginning that journey. Yeah, is my feel. All right. Uh, Luna says you're an amazing inspiration. Thanks. Well, thanks for showing up because <laughs> it's only the women that truly get me, truly understand me, truly see me that enable me to keep doing what I do and disseminating the teachings that are just coming through me. So it's a mutual, you know, yeah, thanks. Okay, any other this questions? Was a, this was a beautiful presentation. Your pictures are so gorgeous, the goddesses, and all the uh, information that you gave, just beautiful. Oh, thank you. Well, look, you know, I've got to be honest, those images I didn't have the copyright to, so I hope that the artists, you know, um, know that this is being done for a higher purpose, um, <laughs> you know, and... I chose them because I love them and I felt the power in those, you know, I mean, art is the language of the soul. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, the most beautiful art is often not the most perfect, but the art that has energy in it. Yeah. And yeah. Thank you for appreciating those images. Yeah. Bless you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Lovely to meet you. And thanks for coming live. Yeah. yeah it makes a difference, doesn't it? When you have people <laughs> to talk to. You get it and you get the transmission too, you know, because, you know, this is why sort of in the East people go and sit with the guru, which just means teacher. You're getting the, the, the transmission when you receive those teachings orally, you know. Yeah, but, I mean, thankfully we have the World Wide Web. Great Grandmother Spider has gifted us this tool to reweave a new creation on the planet so we need to utilize that too so however you however you get it is all good yeah <laughs> bless you thanks for joining me any any more questions bobby says i'm sorry i had to check on my mum for a few minutes i missed the start of the chat no problem life happens um is this course offered at the equinox in september as well it is so good question those of you who are currently going into the start of spring you might like to um set a reminder to register um or actually why don't we open up a registration this week jen for those that want to register for the september intake so that um you can um it will start the new moon before the September equinox, which is the 21st of September. I don't have the date of the new moon because that varies year to year to be able to pull it out of my hat 
which I'm not wearing right now, but um, we'll put that up on the website this week. So if you want to register for the September to do it in alignment so that you're doing it with the autumn and winter, which is when women would do it, then absolutely. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, then this coming intake, um, is it the 16th of March or the 18th of March? I can't remember the date, Jen. You'll need to unmute, honey. Good question. 16th. Thank you. That's my mum's birthday. So, um, so interesting. We start in Pisces, which is the sign of the mystic. How perfect. So, um, yeah, for those coming into autumn, um, the autumn equinox was once known as the, the black wedding. You know, it's when it's the most testing time for couples. It's when we naturally pull apart. So, you know, those that are... Uh, you know, what would you say, initiates will seek union within. Um, Bobby says that'd be great. I'd like to focus on the red tent, which I took three years ago. Great. Yes, I remember you, Bobby. So um, that's a really good point you've raised. I'll come back to you, Helen, in a sec. Um, if you've already signed up for the red tent course that just started this week, and we are taking late registrations if if you were like, oh, hang on, I haven't done that and I'm called to do that, there's a free webinar on the Red Tent course page on my website for more info. Um, I would highly recommend that you only undertake one course at a time, okay? Because otherwise you spread yourself too thin and you just convolute. Yeah, better to devote yourself fully to one priestess pathway uh, at a time um, because most of the magic happens in between digesting the course content, you know, through the synchronicities that you experience. You know, this is a shamanic journey. Life will meet you when you say, hey, I'm going to work with my inner wild woman this month. You better believe it. She's going to come out <laughs> in every way possible, which is why I really encourage women to use the forum to share all those synchronistic experiences, you know. It is literally stepping into a magical mystery tour. So, it's a case of less is more, yeah? We want to do quality, not quantity. So don't sign up for, I want to do the 13 moons and, the, you know, it's like, oh, no. Choose the one which at this time lights you up, yeah? Your nadis know which is the one for now, okay? So the one which you feel most excited about, which, you know, you feel enthusiastic about, that's how we make decisions, yeah, not with the mind of, oh, yes, well, maybe I could start a red tent circle and leave my corporate job. No, what is lighting you up right now? That's the one you do. Okay. Helen has asked, is it possible to buy your chakra essences? Um, I only um, do these with the course. For those doing the retreat, I have a set on the altar that we use every day. You're anointed with spike and art oil to open the spin rate of all the chakras and your you know we anoint you and and um spray your field and uh, channel blessings for you as you enter the temple space every morning after breakfast so we utilize them they were created for this priestess training um when i used to run this course over seven months in person so i'm not selling them you know, to, to buy over the counter, you know, I'm, I'm clear that my role here is as a teacher um, and not as a manufacturer of oils. If I was doing that, I, I wouldn't have the time to do what I'm doing. So, um, yeah, they're, it's only available as part of this initiation. Yeah. Um, okay. Any other questions? No, Tyler, wonderful webcast. Thank you. Um, I've gone through a divorce for exactly the reasons of what you explained. Hey, me too, not alone. <laughs> um, it's part of our growth. No more codependent lesson necessary. Laugh out loud. Yay, you. Um, I'm thankfully ready to embody my goddess fully in balance. I'll get on your site and see if I'll do the course or come to Bali. Woohoo! Do you feel... We can do the goddess makeover on our own. Of course you can. You know, um, 
what is right for one is not right for another. You know, I was asked at the Bali Spirit Festival a few years ago, you know, oh, well, I was on a panel actually, and we were asked, do you need a guru? And I said no. <laughs> because I have experienced, you know, planetary initiations. The, the mother has initiated me directly. Um, you know, if we go to power spots, anybody that goes to sacred sites knows you will experience incredible shifts. So, um, you know, I lived for 10 months on my own off the grid. That's, you know, how I really got the initiation. However, teachers accelerate our journey. Okay, so... Yes, we can do it on our own, but if you want to be more supported, if you want to be more held, um, if you want to access more insights more readily, I have had a wonderful teacher in Jennifer Powell who opened the door to me to the archetypes. And if she hadn't, I don't know, maybe I'd still be working as a stand-up comic and a stripper and be living on pot, cigarettes, alcohol, sugar, <laughs> and being at war with myself, you know. So I'm eternally grateful to her. And so I'm paying that forward. I'm opening the door to women. Um, but it will activate your own remembrances, yeah? So I really honour that you are all your own guru. You're all, you, you all have a high priestess, that tantrika within. Um, so, yeah. Um, I don't expect any bow dowing. I actually have a bit of a problem <laughs> and I see that. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Bobby said, just want to say how much I enjoy listening to you. Thank you. Cool. Look, just great. Um, yeah. So I hope that answers your questions. Are there any more questions before we, we say goodbye? No worries. Thanks, Tyler. No? All right. Cool. Well, it's been a joy. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, thank you for helping reweave the sisterhood, restore these ancient customs that are our birthright so that future generations um, take it for granted that they're, they're theirs. Thank you, Jen, for always holding the space and all the tech stuff so I don't have to worry about that. And I'll say over and out from Bali. Have a beautiful day or a beautiful evening wherever you are. Ciao for now. <laughs> See ya.